Welcome to the first ever Pride special. I decided to do this because I've been working on a song for a long time and I wanted to share it with everyone. And so I invited two of my best friends, Jeff Hayes and Wade Boyles. Basically because to share this song with everyone, I wanted the support of Jeff because I've been learning for the past couple of years and uh, he's been helping me a lot with that. And I thought it would be cool to add a component to it where we could talk about a little bit about the history of Pride, specifically when it comes to Stonewall, as it is kind of part of the name. And uh, I just figured a lot of people might not know or could freshen up on what they know or they think they know about uh, Stonewall. And so this is why I invited the both of you. <laughs> Wait, and he's rubbing my knee because we're husbands. So. Oh, yes. Also that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Stonewall is very important because it was what really um, galvanized and started the uh, gay rights movement that we know of it today. It was, uh, or it still is a bar in New York City. Um, I've been there. We actually, did we go there Yeah, together? that's right, with my mom. Yeah, it's a picture We took my mother there for Mother's Day. Oh, that was fun. And yeah, so there was, it was a lot of drag queens and uh, a lot of people of color that were arrested that, or they were been, been raiding the bar a lot. The place what year was this? So the, the uh, Stonewall riots took place in June, I think it was on the 28th of June, 1969. 1969. Yes. And so this is why we celebrated in June mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. June, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it was Bill Clinton who first recognized June as a Right. And so what exactly went down? When this all happened. So they, when the police came to start arresting people, they rioted and they, they... Why were they arresting people in the first place? Was it just people hanging at the bar and the police just kind of showed up? Well, in the arrest? 1960s in New York City, it was still looked down upon and probably illegal for men to dress as women. Okay. So they were doing it as intimidation too. Um, and then, so they, the, the, the patrons were fed up. And so they resisted and riots started happening and took place for a couple of days, I believe. And I think the first big march for gay rights was the next year on the anniversary of Stonewall. And it was, uh, became the start of the National Pride Marches that we have every year. So there's a catapult of events that takes place. For a hundred years we had had segregation in form, so African Americans, especially in the South, did not have the same rights as white Americans. They were relegated to the back of the bus, they had kids in the same bathrooms, they had water fountains, the list goes on and on. They were not called Jim Crow laws. That all came to an end in 1960, uh, 1956 with, of, uh, with the Supreme Court's decision um, to stop segregation in the public schools. So it ended segregation. Well, it took a while for the South to comply. 1964 is the signing of the Civil Rights Act, which completely ended uh, Jim Crow laws forever. It's to stop that made it illegal. 1965 is the Voting Rights Act, which made it illegal to suppress the right to vote by charging what they used to call poll taxes or litany tests in order to be able to vote made that illegal. Then you see the women's rights movement coming together. 1972 is when uh, Roe v. Wade was signed and abortion became illegal across the country. Night, well, right around that same time, the gay rights movement kicks off with Stonewall riots. 1969 catapults into Harvey Milk in the 1970s with the big gay rights movements out there taking place. New York City has a big gay rights movement. And it just, then the AIDS crisis hits, we lose hundreds of thousands of gay brothers to AIDS from the 70s through the 90s. A big portion of the gay right. population died. So, anyway. All right. Um, <laughs> that was a good summary. That was a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. All this stuff with rights and stuff all tie together throughout American history. We've been struggling. Right. We've been struggling for equal rights because the Constitution says we have the right to what? Liberty, the right to free speech, uh, freedom justice of the press, all equal justice <laughs> for all. But yet that was written by men 
who owned property, and many of them owned human beings, wrote that because their mentality, equality back then meant men equal to them. Well, yeah, and it started out as, <laughs> as <laughs> it started out as white male property owners. Property owners right. Women, only. Did, did you know that like the the term the rule of thumb is actually a pretty offensive anti-feminist term? Really? Yeah, rule of thumb was a thing when when women were property, just like chattel slaves. This is you can, going back before the night. Yeah, well, I believe it. Early settlements of, mm -hmm. of the European settlement and other. You know, anyway, you, could, you couldn't. You, the, you you could legally beat your wife with anything the diameter yeah, of, of your, your of thumb, thumb, and that's the rule of thumb. Wow. So we we actually we use it in this way that's like the default. That's what we're trying to say. Right. right. But it's actually the rule of thumb into, is that the, the, it's right, baked right. into our like colloquial culture to just say that and it's fine, but it's actually horribly yeah, offensive if you know I that history. Yeah. Wow, that's insane. There's a lot of crazy um, things in our history. And so, yeah, and I love talking history to Wade, and that's why I wanted to have him here and asking, you know, about the history, because most of my American history I know from either from you or from drunk history. That's well, drunk true. history that is yeah, a great way to teach my friends who aren't really history buffs like me some history. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And so I also wanted to bring up a little bit, I thought it would be cool to talk about the history of the pride flag. Mm -hmm. So the pride flag, the original pride flag, okay. So in 1977, I believe it's the correct year, is when the first really huge gay rights march took place in San Francisco. And the flag was introduced that year, I believe it's correct. And the, the, all the colors stand for something. Now I have meaning. Like uh, red is for life, and orange is for healing, uh, yellow is for the sun, green for nature, uh, indigo or the blue color is for harmony, and then the purple or the violet is for the soul. And then, and pink is for sexuality. Well, and, oh, and adding the then, I guess this year, it's become very, uh, I guess it's become the new, uh, we've progressed in the gay community, you should say. We have moved forward and we've added our trans brothers and sisters flag colors onto the what was the original pride flag along with black. Some versions have black and brown. So the white and the trans colors stands for non-binary people, or also the meaning is also for people who are in transition. The pink color is for uh, sexuality, and the turquoise color is for art. Well, I've also heard some people say magic, but you know, yeah. art's, art's my thing. And black and brown represent the people of color in the gay community oh, who have additional consequences and steps in life to have to deal with being gay and people of color, which so is more right. double, 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 yes, exactly. I also wanted to take a moment to mention and remember one of our very close friends um, who passed away earlier this year. And um, I found some pictures of us during Pride and uh, it's while we're on the way. But it's the only picture that I have of the two of us with both of our dogs. And Mac and Marley are wearing rainbow um, bananas. Uh, bananas. Oh, He's got blue yeah. on now, too. <laughs> <laughs> and he has raw olives. That looks good. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> that, that is so cute. <laughs> Holly's one of those people that, like, and for me, initially misunderstood on my part, like just totally didn't know. like, kind of like most people that you think aren't big softies on the inside, they're actually big softies on the inside. He was kind of one of those people. He would be very mad. He would be, he would be rolling very, his. He would be very mad at you right now. Very mad. Say, mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, but you know it's okay that mm -hmm. it's okay because because the the people that really knew him like. They knew that, that there's a part of him there. He would never say it out loud. So, so. We have love fishing my butt. 
he was really good at it. I feel like oh, yeah. throughout his life, he just learned oh, how to find God. people's hate oh, yeah. and Such how to like, push them. It was just another video game then. Yeah, yeah, it was. But I kind of love that, actually, yeah. because for me, I'm the type of person who, like, for, for me, he revealed to me my buttons. It's an opportunity for me to improve yeah, myself that's and like true. learn about myself. Oh yeah. wow, I can do that. That would bother me. It's like yeah, that's my true. button, and then it's like you can reflect on that. I did improve and grow as a human. When I was <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I miss him very much. Yeah. Yeah. He was such a talented, smart. Oh man, so smart. It was so much fun when I. Not long after I moved down here permanently and went, started going to Broward College, he also went back to school or, or transferred his credits from Santa Fe up in Gainesville. And then we took classes together. It was so much fun. Oh, that's awesome. He's like a brilliant nerd, yeah, nerdy right. mind. Very like, right. I mean, Absolutely. I felt like he was the only person on the entire East Coast that I could talk at a total nerdy dork level to that wasn't like a colleague at work, you know? So I miss that guy. Yeah, me too. So a couple of years ago, I started learning music and with the help of Jeff, uh, I wrote a song that is called I've Got My Own Back. And the reason I thought that it was relevant and that it would be appropriate for me to share during Pride is because it talks about facing rejection and judgment from other people and but having your own back regardless of other people judging you and rejecting you. And there's a lot of things that we don't really have much control of as far as like how other people look at us, how what other people might do against us. But I feel like if if each one of us can have our own back at least, that's like that could be very helpful for us. Yeah. And so that is the core message of the song. That is the reason I wanted to do this whole thing was to kinda like uh, have a moment to, to share that song with everyone. And it's it's a work in progress, but I wanted to share where it's at now because I've worked on it enough to where I'm ready for the world to see it. And so, uh, we're gonna play that song together for everyone. And uh, here it is, I hope you enjoy it. Hate me with your words. 
can healthy people judge me or reject me But I don't have to do that to myself Even through the shame, I've got my own back Just means I gotta knock myself twice as hard I cannot thank the two of you enough for doing this with me today. This has been a blast. And I hope everyone gets to, you know, I hope everyone got to enjoy the song, learn a little bit about the history, and just hopefully, like, it gives everyone a sense of pride. Because that's what it's all about. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much. Yeah. It's been a privilege to be your friend and to just work with you on your art. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Happy Bright. Right. Happy Bright. Thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs>